Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Ash and Jonathan Tanner. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones, as we once again resume our search for an escape from this nightmarish purgatory. Now, when we left off last time, we were exploring the Bank of Lunatics in search of some clue that the dismal man may have left for us. We've also got a pack of dangerous lunatics right in front of us, so let's get back to it. But first, we need to get the Outsider back in decent fighting shape. In Stygian, if a companion dies, they're dead forever. So, uh, it's best not to take chances. Once more onto the breach, my friends. Now, just like the last couple of fights, I'm not expecting any significant difficulty here. Still, we will keep a close eye on things. This is basically Call of Cthulhu. You never know when everything might go horribly wrong. Man, the Outsider's taking a beating. Let's see if we can have Eduardo run interference. Alright, we have to target these two first. Nice. All right, outsider, fall back. That's fine. Eduardo can take a beating. Wow, he is a tank compared to the Outsider. Ooh, <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> 
And our luck just ran out. Well, that was unfortunate. Let's wrap this up. Alright, well, we took a bit of a beating there, but we will be resting soon anyway. All in all, not bad. Perdono me, senor, but we all need to eat, no? I did my duty as your protector de angel personnel. I wish I could stay for your career amistad, but life is no fairy tale. You wish me to stay, you pay, yes? Hmm. Well, I think we're pretty much done with the bulk of the fighting, so not much point in keeping him on if we're just going to go rest. We will need him again in the future, though. I don't need your protection at the moment. You can go. Your choice, senor. I'll be at the old deal if you change your mind. Adios. Now, let's see what we've got here. Locked. We'll have to come back for that one later. Ooh, and a manuscript for Evil Eye. That would be our first spell. Ever since antiquity, keen and malicious gazes have been believed to inflict a curse upon their target. Okay, so it's really your basic debuff spell. Oh, uh, we do already have that spell in our grimoire, because we recruited the Outsider. I'm not sure if we'd actually keep it, though, if we uh, somehow lost him. Anyway, moving on. Ooh, Danforth's Compass. This Brunton Compass once belonged to Miles Danforth of Miskatonic University. If only Danforth could have made as much use of it in his fevered dreams as he did in his aerial explorations. Increased world map speed. Intriguing. Of course, it is worth noting that every artifact also has a hidden malediction, some sort of negative effect that applies as long as you have it equipped. We'll have to do some proper research to find out what that is. Aha! Bank Manager's Note 3. However, I try to erase it from my mind. I cannot forget the man's reply when I ask the significance of the number zero. Well, little man, every countdown ends with zero, does it not? 
This safe will be necessary after the end. The end of all that is. God forgive me, but I did as he asked. I concealed the accursed safe in the wall of my office two nights ago. It seems that damned motivational poster served a purpose after all. I swim in dark waters now and, God forbid, should I vanish. Well that, um... Yeah, that ended about as well as you could expect it to. I'm sure a similar fate awaits us all. The haphazard effort to brick up the hole in this wall suggests that someone wishes to conceal something behind it. All right. Let's see what we can do about that. You may try to find a weakness in the structure of the bricks. <laughs> okay, well, could it be this one right here? You achieved finding a weak spot in the structure of the wall and successfully uncovered the locker numbered zero. Lovely. Cthulhu Statuette, a small gray-green stone idol of a grotesque winged creature. Although you cannot be sure of its age, it has an aura of abysmal antiquity. Dismal Man's Poem This weird poem is maddeningly opaque, offering more in the way of confusion than clues. A memorabilia from the Dismal Man. The soul of a scavenger of the sea shall be found inside a bottle of lead. The last wish of a bottleless starfarer shall be heard from a mouth not of flesh. The drop of swarming chaos shall be stolen under the ruins, once halls of wisdom. And the book shall be read, which should not be read. Only then you may wish to call me by the timeless stones on the nameless isle. Only then you may wish to walk by me between the endless realms of pitch black. Not exactly a conventional poem, but... Then again, I suppose the Dismal Man isn't exactly a conventional patron. The disfigured occultist approaches you. May I read the manuscript we found, stranger? My knowledge may help to illuminate its mystery. Sure, knock yourself out. He takes the manuscript as delicately as his claw-like hands will allow and reads it carefully. What could be the scavenger of the seas? Perhaps a sea monster of some kind. I've read about all kinds of sea beasts in my dusty tomes. Gargantuan devils that can sink galleons with their feelers. Hunters of the dark waters with razor-sharp teeth. What was meant in the line about the bodiless starfarer? A bodiless starfarer? I know there are celestial beings of great power journeying across the endless blackness. Could it be one of them? What do you think the drop of swarming chaos symbolizes? The reference is too vague to make a reasonable guess, stranger. And the book that should not be read? Why seek a book that should not be read? Such knowledge is often followed by damnation. Where do you suppose we might find it? The depiction resonates as a tome of the dark arts to me. A native who is knowledgeable either in such artifacts or the occult itself can perhaps enlighten you further. 
Understood. Let's go. Now, let's see here. The Footsteps of the Dismal Man. A cryptic poem. I finally unlocked Safe Deposit Box Zero, but it only raised new questions. There was an enigmatic poem inside the box. Was it meant to be a prophecy or a set of veiled instructions? Perhaps both. The safe deposit box also contained a grotesque statuette of one of the awakened. Will it help me, I wonder, or hasten my doom? The antique store might be a good place to start. Okay, sounds like we've got a game plan. Let's head back to the old eel and get some rest and... After that, we'll pay Isidore a visit. Convenient. Looks like we do have new loot. Guess we should do a full sweep then. Oh, you know, we do have that shot of morphine this guy wanted, but I'd really rather avoid giving it to him if possible. We'll just try talking to him again once we've boosted our social skills. And once again, we've got new faces. Plus Eduardo. Excuse me, may I have a word with you? Okay, so we need to talk to that guy, but let's get some rest first. Otherwise, we'll end up suffering penalties to any dialogue checks. What is it, Cornudo? I want to rest in the attic. Of course. I hope you enjoy our special suite, the Royal Attic. He giggles for a while. After getting no response from you, he quickly gets down to business. Forty cigs, Cornudo, and make it quick. Oof, <laughs> that is pricey, but we don't have much choice here. There's the outsider. I was wondering where he got off to. Cornelius's pocket watch. Beatified by a cross motif, the exquisite golden watch bears the inscription Nunquam Derolinquer Tus Persuasio. Or something like that. Didn't put any points into Latin. All right, now, let's get some rest. First up, we need to study that spell manuscript, just in case we end up losing the outsider. Hmm, we need to study Danforth's compass too, but we can have the outsider take care of that. I guess we could spend the rest of our points on gambling. Certainly couldn't hurt. 
Then we'll have the outsider start studying that compass. And we could have him treat injuries, but we don't have a doctor's bag yet. We'll have to pick one up as soon as we have the SIGs for it. Huh. Though you're not exactly acquainted with your immediate surroundings here in this desolate urban setting, you don't feel like a stranger either. Is this Arkham? Perhaps a forgotten corner of which you've never seen. Amidst the Sumerian stillness, there stands a forlorn figure, barely present but inescapably real. He seemed to be walking towards a certain house along the street before stopping to look at you. This place, alien yet almost familiar. His aloofness is in contrast with his contemplative eyes, under which you glimpse a sea of wonder. Isn't that the heart of the matter? To be somewhere foreign, to escape. If I must form a conjecture, a strong desire must have conduced to the peculiar circumstances of our meeting. He looks at you attentively with unblinking eyes. You're a wanderer, like me, perhaps. The timbre of his voice consists of sublime overtones. Why would you be here if you weren't? Is this a dream? In all likelihood, yes. But what if it's actually a nightmare instead? He glances away in dismal gravity. But the real question revolves around you, doesn't it? Perhaps you've been compelled to seek a memory which isn't yours at all. His eyes darken. You emanate a tragic aura, source of which is most dire. And what do you seek? A brief pause and his definitive answer cuts right through this tension of Stygian abstractness. Inspiration. Know this, Wanderer. There will be a price to pay when you have no option but to cling to visions brim with unutterable horrors in order to procure your only means of subsistence, however maddening they may be. Tell me who you are. I must know. I won't grant an answer that easily. Knowledge of someone is a powerful thing, and this premise applies even in dreams. But I'll offer you a chance, since you've intruded my fantasy. I'll tell you of my journeys, and you will tell me who I am. He speaks in a frigid but lyrical tone. Refraining from the pageantry of the mundane, a boy shall wander into the path of prophecy. Nebulous is the truth of all things, future and past, dwelling beyond the serpent's lair for none but him to see. Only the forbidden he shall thereafter seek, lurking in the labyrinth so forgotten and forlorn. Plagued will be those upon whom he shall touch, hailed by the oblivion which they will have forborne. Carried away to his fantasy on wings ethereal, a toilsome quest he shall embark upon so sedulously. Resplendence of his dreams, however, is not to remain. Thus the search for the silver key must begin duly. Exalted he will be in the deathless continuum, wild and free, resigning from the world to embrace all that was and will ever be. Answer me then, wanderer. Who am I? Well, let's put that investigation skill to work. You cast an eye on him in scrutinizing fashion, before finally mumbling out the findings of your deduction. Hands have seen no hard labor, rather tenuous, not veiny. You notice a faint smile that has appeared on his visage. 
obtuseness on the tips of fingers. Typewriter? His smile widens, almost turning into a smirk. It's probable that you're an author. He claps gently in admiration. Well, well, you've been keeping your keen eyes busy, I reckon. Apparel indicates nobility, the abrasion marks, however. He arches his eyebrows in suspense. Perhaps worn for a long time, with no means to replace them. He seems to concede your surmise. Which hints that your financial situation could be worse than what you'd like to show for. He nods solemnly and puts on a thin smile. You may not have solved my riddle, but instead you did better. You solved me, or a discernible part of me at least. You seem to be endowed with the proper traits to guide you in the dreamlands. My name is Randolph Carter. He diverts his gaze to the dolesome skies. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must cover a long way to eternity. Randolph Carter, I met your wife. She's looking all over for you. Very strange. Oh, and uh, I guess we're done resting. Looks like we learned a new spell, and we got beaten for cheating at gambling. Guess it can hurt after all. And we confirmed the power of Danforth's compass. Though I guess we'll have to study it again to uncover the malediction. As if it was somehow foreordained, I met an elusive individual in the secluded dreamscape I visited last night, where he granted me his name, Randolph Carter. I recall that the lady I met in French Hill was looking for him. If I can find her, perhaps I could tell her about this confounding experience. Alright, I guess we'll have to keep an eye out for Randolph's wife. Oh, hey, that's, um, that's her right there. Well, that's certainly convenient. You find Sonia showing Marino a picture and asking in a distressed voice whether he's seen a man named Randolph Carter. Okay, let's get a look at that picture. The dashing but otherwise thin-lipped and pale gentleman in the picture is definitely the man you saw in your dream. Sorry for eavesdropping, miss, but I believe I've seen the man you're looking for. You have? Oh, please, do tell. Her words are cut off by an impertinent Marino. A senor of high standards such as yourself shouldn't pay attention to a man who can barely pay for my services. The know-it-all here probably wants to squeeze you, that's all. Try to lie a little harder, Marino, and even you just might believe it. Ignoring you, Marino interrupts yet again. Well, um, sorry, senora. Allow me to serve you our finest liquor. He pours whiskey from the bottle. His face is very familiar, actually. Let me look at that picture again. Filling her glass, Marino throws you a mean gaze. Sonia is looking straight at you as if her life depends on what you're about to tell her. So, did you really see my Randolph? I did indeed, miss, in the queerest way imaginable. She looks perplexed but intrigued. Then if I'm to believe you, sir, you must provide some details about him. He had a wide chin, thin lips, and wore a silk jacket, green bow tie, and vest. 
Well, yes, very accurate. He used to wear that for special occasions, just as he did to the journalist's convention where we met. So strange. Were you acquainted with him before? I'd never seen the man in my life before I did in my dream. So what was he doing, or where was he going? Did he tell you anything else apart from his name? He was about to enter an old abandoned house somewhere in Arkham. She shudders and her eyes become teary. Just, just like he wrote in his last letter. Oh, he's here. He must be alive then. How did he communicate with you? And why you instead of me? Some practitioners of the art are known to seep into other psyches. She seems to be drowned in a sea of memories for a few short moments as she looks deep into the vagueness. Finally, a single tear of happiness trickles down her cheek. I'm Sonia H. Green Carter. Thank you for sharing this with me, Mr. My name is John Trench. Nice meeting you as well, Sonia. Can you help me find him then? There must have been a reason for Randolph to meet you. If I follow you, would you be kind enough to take me to that house? Of course, Sonia. I'll be glad if I can be of any assistance. She's taken by surprise. Oh, thank you. But I don't mean to derail you from your obligations, whatever they may be. Are you sure I won't be a drawback? Not at all, Sonia. That's very courteous of you. There's very little kindness left in this world. Shall we? And that gets us our second companion, Sonia Green Carter. Looks like she's an investigator, humanistic with the milliner background. Though it also says she's a horror writer. Stat-wise, she's actually not that far off from what we've got. Looks like she's good with a gun, too. Though the uh, investigation skill is, unfortunately, largely wasted on her. She can't use it actively on our behalf, but... I think she can still passively spot hidden objects and detect threats on the world map. I guess it's worth investing in. Hmm. And she has a choice between an offensive or a defensive perk. Okay, let's keep her focused on firearms and investigation. She's already invested there anyway. And we'll pick up Mysterious Dodge. She's not exactly a tank. Alright, moving on. Oh, actually, let's make sure she's properly equipped first. Yeah, we'll need to give her a gun. Oh, this is new. That must be her gun, though it begs the question of why she didn't already have it equipped. You know what? Let's give her both. That'll give her a little extra tactical flexibility. Though ammo might end up becoming an issue. Okay, we'll save these guys for next time we pass by, but for now, let's go meet up with Cornelius. After that, we'll swing by Isidore's.
One thing I do need to do is uh, do a little shopping between episodes, unload some of our junk, and replace it with things like rations and lockpicks. There's no reason to really waste your time with that kind of thing. Blood and soul of this withered wretch is insult to the old ones. Just finish him and leave his corpse to rot. Cornelius lies bleeding on the cold, besmirched ground as waves of agony convulse his body. Riddled dispiteously, he perhaps would have already given up his last breath, but for your timely arrival. Gagging on his own blood, he can hardly talk. Y you've come. Thank the good Lord. But my time is up, I'm afraid. He wheezes faintly. Listen to me. The watch is of no use to me anymore. I, I've lived for, and I am about to, to die for my convictions. Come to think of it, I don't regret it. I was tired of living like a rat anyway. He coughs up blood. You can c keep the watch, but promise me this. You're going to use it for something you believe in. Very well, Cornelius. I'll do what I can. That's good to... to... With his dying breath, he struggles to utter his last words, but his broken body has had enough. With a quiver that lasts but a moment, he finally dies. Oh, Cornelius. Sorry, man. Bearing witness to the brutal stabbing of Cornelius has planted in you a concrete idea about the consequences that may await those who get marked by Arkham's new ruling elite. So, in short, don't piss off the mob. Got it. Ah, right. We still need lockpicks. Oh, that's new. All right, let's check out that trap door. Oh, never mind. Our sanity's already low enough without rummaging around in the dark. We'll try that again once we've got some sort of light source.
Okay, let's pay Isidore a visit. Yes, are you looking for something in particular? Hmm. I intend to consummate the dying wish of a person who fell victim to the cultists. Out of all the possible things that could be wished for in this world or the next, did this person specifically entreat you to pester me during my studies? You're rather becoming a nuisance to me. Your endearing nature never fails to draw me to your humble shop, Isidore. I'm up to my elbows redacting this atrocious translation of Sefer Raziel Hamalak, so could you just state your business and leave me be? Very well. I want to trade this watch for a special artifact of yours. Hmm. Isidore scrutinizes the watch for a few moments. It's evident that the hapless victim's heirloom has captured his attention. It's handmade, 24 karat gold plated, and is of near impeccable craftsmanship. There is an inscription, V. Riccoletti, leading me to conclude that it's Italian. Could be a hundred years old, still ticking away gracefully. I can see that this person had exquisite taste. I may have just the item to commemorate his memory. He sifts through the objects in the glass case, then through the cabinets, and as he's about to give up, he spots it. Aha! There it is! St. Vincent's Waxen Hands! upon which countless Catholic prayers have been made in honor of his humility and compassion. Unfortunately, his bones were plundered during the riots of 1815. Anyway, St. Vincent was the patron of charitable deeds, and it seems rather meaningful to trade it for the deceased's pocket watch. And if you're lying to me, know that there will be no shortage of space in Jehinnom. Sounds like we've made a deal. He gives you the hands while putting Cornelius' pocket watch inside the glass case. It was nice doing business with you. Now, if you will allow me, I have a long and complicated text to decipher. Let's see if the power it grants will have any benefit to me. Interesting. I don't think I've actually seen this before. St. Vincent's Waxen Hands Mummified in wax and stand as if clenched together in an expression of humility, these are the hands of a venerated French Catholic priest, famed for his zealous embrace of charity. No hint at what it actually does, though. We'll have to study it next time we rest. All right, Isidore, we're not quite done with you just yet. Yes, what is it now? Isidore, what do you know about this statuette? Isidore pushes his glasses up over his blurry eyes and takes a closer look at the object. It looks like a rendition of one of the deities that the cult worships. I've seen a crude totem similar to this one on Riverside. His eyes fall to the figurine again. The art style is peculiar, though. I cannot attribute it to any culture I know of, and I can't say that I enjoy its presence. Take it away, sir. I don't want anything related to that bloody cult in my shop. He returns to his business. That didn't go well. I didn't learn much from Isidore. I should keep an eye out for someone who could tell me more about this frightening figurine. All right, sorry, Isidore. One more time. Let's uh, see your wares. Very nice. We have just enough to purchase the lucky pouch of Al Khalid. 
It's a bit tight, but let's do that. Now, let's have a look at this thing. Lucky Pouch of Al Khalid. Some still believe that this embroidered golden pouch granted the wealthy merchant Al Khalid, into whose belly a baby camel would fit, his impeccable bartering skills. Malediction Unknown. Well, this one's not hard to figure out. We can already see our reaction and uh, stealth value have taken a hit. I'm guessing that's tied in to the subtle hint that Al Khalid was a portly fellow. Anyway, I think this brings us to a pretty good stopping point for now. Uh, just a heads up, I am going to do a little trading off screen, but. I'll try to keep it restricted to just Isidore and Rathsack. We'll pick up here next time. Resupplied, re-equipped, and ready for the next stage of our nightmarish journey. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Kickstarter. Links are in the description.